Oh, you know what time it is, guys? What's the time? It's it time is to do chop shop time, and that oh. means that we're gonna unleash Nupkix's creativity, and uh, he's going. He's going to uh, feel free to rip it apart. I don't mind. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can say what you want. It's all good. Oh, what is this? <sighs> All right, so this is like a, I want to do a little re-intro for those of you tuning in later and, uh, or for those of you uh, with Goldfish memory who don't remember what uh, it was when we talked about it the first time. So Hero Chop Shop is actually a show that I did with Tetcher uh, on a regular basis a few months ago where we would basically dedicate our time to uh, theory craft and create like new fictional hero concepts. And I found that really cool, and I don't think there's any other uh, broadcast or podcast that does it, at least not to my knowledge. If you know some, then let me know. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to theorycraft and introduce a new hero concept. Disclaimer, this doesn't mean it's going to become the next hero. Blizzard did not pay us. They did not give us information that you guys don't have. So this is totally imaginary and uh, totally our imagination. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's introduce the hero that we ta uh, thought of and talked about. It is... Mal Ganes. Oh my goodness. Quite the <laughs> fan favorite, if I may say so. I think uh, next to Maiev and maybe... Actually, Maiev and Phoenix were pretty high up there as well. Yeah. Uh, Mal Ganes uh, is there. And Deathwing, of course. Can't forget about him. Rip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a fan favorite, though. And uh, rightfully so, right? Because he was one of the key figures, one of the key characters in Warcraft 3. Um, in the human yep. campaign with Arthas turning evil, you know, and uh, slaying uh, Malganus, or at least thinking he slayed him. I mean, like, that was like, the, one of the biggest moments I think everyone who played Warcraft 3 will remember is going in and doing that, the culling of Stratholm, you know, and racing yeah. against Malganus. Like, end. that was, what a mission, you know? Oh, <laughs> like, I'll never forget Kill that your one. own citizens. Yeah, yeah, like, that's such a turning point. It was awesome, yeah, and he's the big bad guy in that one. Heku, anything that comes to your mind when you see the Dreadlord? The thing, the first thing is it comes like the World of Warcraft uh, dungeon again, mm -hmm. like because it's like basically the same thing. It's like the Strat home where oh, you're yeah, yeah. and like to so, to kill him. And I think if you do oh, it, you like, go back in time, right? You go back in time in yeah, the time walking yeah. dungeon. Yeah, exactly. And I think mm. if you do it like really fast, you get a bronze dragon or something like that. But yeah, yep. but that's like the first thing that comes into my mind. Yeah, and of course he's a dreadlord. Um, he's not mm -hmm. the only dreadlord. There is many of them. Uh, I forgot the names of the yeah. other ones. So I just well, Tychondrius is another big one. In Warcraft three. Uh, Balnazar time. is one of them, and I think Verimathras, who's like the former yeah, bodyguard the of Sylvanas, right? Yeah. So there's there's a couple <laughs> of cool dudes. They all have very difficult names to remember and pronounce True. correctly. <laughs> all right. So and we labeled him his class. <clears throat> we labeled as Assassin slash support. Yeah, uh, can so you talk to us, Nepkix, why you chose this sort of hybrid character? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, that was the clue I gave at the start of the podcast, right? Was that this hero was used as a support, which totally took me by surprise. Like, I hopped mm -hmm. onto the, the Wikipedia page for Malganus. So um, I wanted to, you know, check up on and make sure I had my, my memory was right about what all of his abilities in Warcraft 3 were. Um, and yeah, it was saying, yeah, the Dreadlord was used by undead players mostly as a support character. Now, I never played or followed Warcraft theme myself, so maybe you guys in, in the chat. I who, was ah, an undead main. There you go. Was Malganus <laughs> a support? Were the, was the Dreadlord a support character? Or like, is he that... was definitely not a damage dealer. Like, he was not yeah. uh, like a demon hunter or a warden <clears throat> who would basically deal a lot of damage, or like a blade master, right? I, yeah. I can see, like, he was definitely more like a crowd control support uh, yeah. hero, right? So okay. you would basically empower your ghouls. He was almost always played with the ghouls in Warcraft 3. So you would mm -hmm. sleep a hero, then you surround it with all your ghouls, and then you kill him, or you force the TP. Uh, so yeah. those were the good days until uh, <laughs> ghouls became really weak and everybody played Crypt Fiends. So ah. <laughs> the Death Knight was uh, like the main thing to do. And I don't yeah. even know if he's still being played like the Dreadlord. Um, mm. But yeah. he had some very unique traits and abilities and characteristics, yes. right? And yeah. one of them, as you said, is um, the ability to restore health in a, a very vampiric way. And that's where yeah. we're going to talk about his trade first, vampirism. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when I was kind of picking abilities that I could give him, uh, I mean, I started with the baseline, of course, of his abilities from Warcraft 3. I mean, you couldn't exclude those at all. Um, 
uh, I kind of went a little bit heavy, perhaps. Like, this is the thing. The Dreadlord's kind of a combination of demon and there's very strong vampire themes. So I kind of went a bit in on the vampire one. You can let me know if I went a bit too far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one of the big challenges, of course, uh, for one of his abilities is the vampiric aura, which is so, you know, it, it's the classic, mm -hmm. one of the classic Dreadlord abilities that you would always associate with them. I mean, that's an aura. It's totally passive. That's not something, you know, it works great in a, in a real-time strategy game, but it's not going to work in a game like Heroes. You want something that's active. So yeah, that was one of the challenges in terms of making the kit yeah. was how do you make that kind of fun or interesting? Um, and I kind of built some a bit around that. And um, that's also, I kind of tailored it to that support role. Um, and also just to make it clear as well, um, I'm talking about support in terms of how Blizzard is kind of moving towards talking about support, where they're distinguishing between a healer, which is your team's main healer, and then a support, which kind of gives a bit of extra protection, mm -hmm. maybe a bit of extra CC. So a support character in the way I mean it is someone like Tassadar Medivh. or Medivh, yeah. yeah, or maybe Abathur, you know, that they give you that little extra bit, but they're not the main healer by any mm -hmm. means. Um, so yeah, with Malkanus, I thought it'd be kind of fun, right? If you if you made this guy a, uh, a hero that would spend health, spend his own health to use abilities instead of having mana, he'd actually spend Ooh. HP, which I don't think we have in the game yet. I mean, kind of Zul'jin a little bit with uh, his basic attacks, but mm -hmm. um, I thought that'd be kind of fun. And then to build in the sort of the gameplay loop into the character where, okay, I'm spending my HP, to use my abilities, and then I have to go in and actually go into melee range, start me uh, basic attacking, uh, especially against enemy heroes, to get that HP back, and then be able to empower my team more or to shut down the enemy team a bit more. Cool. So that was kind of that's kind of the core of his trait there, which I was looking at, uh, cool. which we call vampirism. And I thought it'd be kind of fun too that it would it would do a much bigger bonus against heroes. So kind of functioning a little bit like a an Oriole, uh, mm -hmm. except instead of you know generating energy. Uh, you're kind of just regening your own life. Um, and that also introduces, of course, counterplay in that when you do use some of these abilities that you're going to dip down in HP, you're going to be a bit more vulnerable to being focused and bursted, which is always dangerous as a melee support kind of character. So basically, um, uh, you need to hit your abilities and they need to deal damage in yep. order for you to gain that health bonus, right? Uh, yeah. And against enemy heroes, you would re re restore more health lost. And against minions, mm -hmm. let's say only 50% or... Uh, whatever yeah. number you can uh, you can fit in there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, a lot of the balancing and stuff for, for heroes yeah. comes down to those little numbers. So exactly. <laughs> All right. And so and yeah, go ahead, Heku. Sorry. A, sorry, I just wanted to ask. You mentioned that you want to, uh, him to be a melee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like just wondering, because like I don't was he was he melee or was he ranged in? No, no, Warcraft he was a melee three? fighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just smacking dudes with those big old claws. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, um, speaking of uh, claws and uh, dealing damage, I think yes. we can talk about one of his iconic abilities from Warcraft 3 as well, the Carrion Swarm. Yeah. Um, you, you well, redesigned it a little bit differently than the original Warcraft 3 ability, which was like yeah. one gigantic cone. Um, yes. I think in competitive play, if I remember correctly, it was almost never used. Uh, okay. <laughs> the way the way it went, the way it worked in Warcraft Three was you could only skill one ability, right? And then you get level up, you yeah. skill another one. So you couldn't have all abilities active at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, unless you leveled uh, high enough, right? But mostly people focused on Vampiric Aura and Sleep, and they leveled up those abilities rather than investing into Carrion Swarm. But uh, mm -hmm. instead of just having one gigantic cone, uh, what we came up with was uh, three waves, right? So three tiny yeah. waves, or individual waves so i wanted to ask you uh Nepkex, mm -hmm. would you rather have three waves so you, like you cast it once and it goes like wave 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 or mm -hmm. would you go for maybe individual stacks and you can cast wave wait a little wave and you have like different stacks of waves that you yeah. can use at your own dis disposal yeah I, I don't mind at all i think they're both actually pretty cool ideas i i mean i came up with the idea of waves in the first place to kind of make it a bit different from just being like another Gul'dan Q, which is mm. very similar to how carrying swarm actually functions uh in warcraft 3 so i thought how could we mix it up well maybe add in like the sort of the jaina blizzard type mechanic if there's a few waves and you know there's kind of counter play around that you know if you place it in the perfect spot in the team fight you might get the maximum damage but perhaps enemy heroes can sidestep it and so on so yeah i think you know charges could work really well too you know that's kind of a fun gameplay thing to manage your charges mm -hmm. so yeah I, I thought you know it's pretty i i kept it kind of simple and you could always you know make it a lot more interesting with talents exactly. perhaps applying debuffs or whatever but, that's what we're here for right yeah. just talking yeah. and exploring certain uh <laughs> yeah. possibilities 
Like, yeah. and that's the cool thing when when doing these fictional uh, imaginary hero concepts, right? We can always talk about mm. stuff like how to make it stronger potentially, or how to make it yeah. weaker if it turns out to be too strong or too weak, respectively. Mm -hmm. um, you could also say, like, for example, if his wave clear was too strong with that kind of ability, you could say like it only affects enemy heroes, right? The carrion yeah. ignores the minions and just goes for heroes and uh, damages them. Yeah, I, I kind of figured that it, you know, it, it make it something like a Tassadar Psy Storm, where it's not super powerful, but it's mm -hmm. kind of noticeable. And because I was kind of thinking of him as this melee hero that you know you're spending you're spending your health. Uh, I thought it'd be nice if he had a bit of a ranged option as well that he could get some healing out of so that you don't get stuck in that situation where you're on you know, half life and you kind of feel just totally useless. You're like, I can't run right. in to get basic attacks up and heal so I can cast more spells. Um, I'm too vulnerable. So it gives you a little bit of an in there, like mm -hmm. if you're in a tough lane or something. So that's kind of my, my thoughts on, on that one. Heck, and uh, heck, go ahead. You I was, was going to ask you something, but go ahead first. Yeah. <laughs> You want like to make it like a charge, like he he stands and he charges charges like those three waves. No, like a Lunara, like Lunara leaping strike, where there's two charges to the ability, so you can cast it a couple of times in a row, and they recharge. No, no I think Eko was saying like, uh, does he have to stand still while casting that? Oh, or... uh, I kind of figured it'd be kind of fast, mm -hmm. you know, like a Tastar Ice Storm again, just kind of drop it out. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because at first, like from the description, I thought it's like. Okay, you stand up and you're like you send one wave, second wave, and third wave. You know, like, like the Nazebo toads, where yeah. you can like channel them. That's what I just did, like for the description. I want to just make sure because, you know, like forcing a hero to just stand in one spot and to channel something, so, mm. uh, usually is like very dangerous. Like nobody goes for Gul'dan with the reign of RNG because he's just standing. <laughs> I in do one sometimes, spot and... <laughs> but don't take uh, me for no one decides. <laughs> <can't> <laughs> goes like for this you know so yeah yeah that that's uh, why that's what, what what my exact same thought process was and that's why mm. i thought you know it would be cool to give him stacks right to say mm. okay he's got like two stacks of okay, and swarm or three stacks and then you can cast one boom you move a little bit yeah. boom cast the next one and and so on and so forth mm -hmm. so yeah. heck how well do you remember the boss fight in uh, world of warcraft against uh Mal malganis Oh, I think, I mean, it's like, uh, first of all, it's a dungeon, so it doesn't last for too long. Mm -hmm. And it was in the Wrath of the Lich King. Yeah, so which is quite was, some time. It's been a while. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I remember getting a dragon, and that's basically it. So, do you remember, by chance, uh, if Malganis was able to put one of your party members to sleep? I'm not sure. <laughs> I really, really don't remember. I think <laughs> I might have been able to do that, but I don't remember myself either. Um, but yeah, sleep is going to be... Uh, let's actually go to sleep. I messed the order up, but let's talk about sleep then. Yeah. Um, sleep is the key, right? That's the key. probably the most iconic. They have to have, If they put them in, they have to put in that sleep sound effect from Warcraft. Oh, let's, let's, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that is a classic. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about uh, how I thought sleep might work in the game um, for yeah. uh, uh, while you're doing that. So, yeah, I, I thought, you know, obviously sleep has to be in the game. How can they make it? How can they make it interesting on this hero? How can they make it work? Um, so I, the way I put it was maybe have it be a two second channel. So I wanted it to be a channeled ability. It gives counterplay to the enemy team because it's such a powerful effect. You know, you lock someone down, you force them to be asleep. I'm going to yeah. give it a, I, I said I'd give it a pretty, you know, medium to long range as well. So, you know, pretty significant. Uh, ability to perhaps engage in the team fight or within a team fight to maybe lock down a damage dealer on the back line, which you know other characters can't necessarily do. So a different kind of way to support your team. Um, so yeah, I said make it make it be channeled. So you know there's kind of play. You can be interrupted. You can be a target. Maybe even give it a fairly hefty health cost to cast. So again, mm. it makes you kind of a juicy target while you're doing it. Um, but like we've got the sleep effect in the game, like you said with Deckard, stay a while and listen and yeah. a sleep dart. So there's a few different ways in. Uh, I mean, in comparison to Anna Sleep Dart, I was like, you can make this be really strong. It's like a point and click, fairly long range sleep, somewhat like a Sylvanas mind control that makes them stand still. True. You know, it's a pretty powerful effect. Um, and then I added a little extra bit on, I which love I was the kind extra, of... dude. I, that was yeah. my personal highlight. That was so okay. Yeah, I was kind done. of experimenting, and I was kind of like, okay, well, how could what, what extra sort of gameplay could you add into this? So I said, you know what, let's go full on vampire here. So while you're challenging it, you can reactivate the ability. And you'll like lunge towards the the target, and you'll bite them, doing extra damage, and therefore, of course, giving yourself you know an extra chunk of of life steal. So going full in on that vampire type fantasy, 
Uh, and then, of course, you got that the, the, sort of the gameplay loop of that of, OK, now I'm, I'm in. It's a bit of a gap closer. I can get more attacks off, which means I get healed more, which means to be able to use these abilities more often. Right, right. But then, of course, on the downside, he doesn't really have an escape. So then you become, again, like a fairly big focus target. And the enemy team, they see you cast sleep. They know who you've targeted. They can prepare to, to deal with that when you go in. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. You know, it's like decision. All right, you know, will I, will I sleep someone on the back line and then follow that up with diving on top of them, try to, you know, focus them down and get them killed? Or is that just going to get me killed? So I'll just sleep and then not get the value out of that reactivation. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it standing there. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of something I threw in there. So, you know, a bit of a twist on the classic really Warcraft nice. 3 sleep. It also gives him like a little bit of an engage, right? Instead of yeah. just uh, making him that, that, uh, that backline mm -hmm. caster or whatever. Um, yep. That's so cool. Like that that sleep ability is is my personal highlight. It, you would probably have to give it like a fairly hefty cooldown, so you yeah, can uh, use it like all mm. the time. So maybe a twenty second cooldown, something along those lines. Yeah, it's a very powerful effect, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, if you make it point and click, if it's a skill shot and like on a sleep dart, then it can be a bit shorter. But if you're gonna make it anything like point and click, that that consistent, it's such a powerful effect. There has to be big drawbacks yeah. to it. Yeah. Or maybe maybe you could also say that the same target can't be slept twice. So you could say that, you know, if you if you sleep the enemy Rainer, then you would have to choose a different target for your next sleep. Mm. OK, yeah, so, yeah. You know, there, there's many, many ways to toy yeah. around with this. Mm. Yeah, that is a cool mechanic. Like Thrall has that with that level 16 exactly, talent. With a, and, with a yeah. thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. They could do that more often with more heroes. That, mm -hmm. That's a pretty fun one. Yeah. Heck, what are your thoughts on sleep? I think I like the idea of like jumping to like target this in sleep because mm -hmm. maybe it can also be used as an escape, not only as initiation. Yeah. Like you no, know, if somebody like trying to body block you, and the first thing that came into my mind, imagine like so there's the like I don't know somebody is like trying to body block you, uh, and there's like their enemy team is like running to you and trying to kill you. You put a sleep on them. Your stitch just hooks that person, and then you activate, and you're just so far away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's whoosh. Yeah, like, <laughs> and like, yeah, like, and you didn't just take care of that team, like, of that, like, enemy that got uh, hooked. So I was like, man, you can think of so many good things with this. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's a really interesting ability and it sounds pretty good. Yeah. It's like not the standard sleep. It's not like, oh, and now you're sleeping. Ooh. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> that's what I really like about it as well. Like, um, it's just like one point and click and you're, you're done with it, but you have this activatable component that just gives you so many more chances to make plays, right? So it's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, an yeah. ability that's not really as spectacular as uh, the Carrion Swarm or the Sleep mm -hmm. is his W, uh, Vampiric Aura, which is probably the, next to the Sleep, like the most key thing that uh, yeah. the Dreadlord in Warcraft was known for. Um, mm -hmm. You're gonna have. We're probably gonna have to do a little bit of explaining there because, yeah. um, like, does it have a passive effect or an active uh, component, or is it just um, passive or active? Like, how how did you have this oh, in mind? So, okay. okay, so basically, I was figuring. Okay, you can put like the life steal and using life to fund is it your only abilities, on abilities into, or is it only uh, uh, on auto attacks or both? Yeah, well, that that was that was something I was wondering. Like, you could make it. I mean, I I made it very simple. Like, I basically, just based it off. Tassadar's uh, Q, the way it gives mm -hmm. lifesteal. Uh, and you can obviously spec into that more so in Tassadar. I figured, you know, just I, I made it very simple here, just as something to start off with, which is, you know, you just give the lifesteal effect uh, from the Tassadar thing without any of the shielding. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, and you could potentially like twist it up in different ways. Like, like you said, maybe give it some spell vamp instead. Or make uh, it a so talent, you, oh, you know, you pick a talent, yeah, and then yeah. it also uh, applies mm -hmm. to abilities, right? Yeah, exactly. Make it a talent. You could, you know, add, you know, sort of a frenzy effect to it, maybe. Like, that was another ability, I thought. I think it was, was it un, was it the Necromancer or something? Had that in Warcraft 3? The Unholy Frenzy. You yeah, put, yeah, like, yeah, a yeah, big yeah. attack speed buff on someone, but uh -huh. it starts hurting them. It starts draining exactly, their life. Yes. Well, that could be a fun thing. I mean, <laughs> you could also kind of grief <laughs> control your teammates, right? But, I mean, that could be a cool way to, perhaps, that could be something that could be explored as well. Or maybe even just for himself, like he starts losing life quite rapidly for a big attack speed buff. I don't know. But I figured, yeah, I mean, this is some way to support your teammates a little bit, give them the extra heal. And there's kind of fun gameplay to that. Like, I quite, I think the Tassadar shielding stuff is, is quite a lot of fun. That's a bit more, in some ways, kind of reactive or uh, preventative because mm -hmm. of the shielding aspect. So give it more of that, like, okay, well, I know that, you know, my, my Hanzo, he's kind of low on life, but he's going to be going forward and being pretty aggressive here. 
I spec'd into some spell vamp. I'm going to throw this on him because I know he's going to be doing his big, you know, burst damage. He's got a great right. scat coming up in the next two seconds. Here we go. That will heal him up. I think that could be kind of cool. So, yeah, that's pretty basic what I got here. Yeah. I mean, you can't have a hero or almost none of the heroes in the Heroes of Storm have three flashy abilities, right? There always needs to be mm. one thing that's rather simple that doesn't really overwhelm you. So uh, having yeah. like, a, like a nice aura or with an activatable component is uh, yeah, it's definitely nice. I mean, that's another thing you could do. You could have it kind of like, you know, the Tyrande, uh True Shot aura that she has, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where it's like, it's a passive buff, but then you, you have a long cooldown. You can activate it, which yeah. massively amplifies the effects of that. You could do something like that as well if, if the aura aspect is really crucial to getting that Dreadlord feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. I also thought of maybe like uh, it can be similar to uh, Zul'jin's trade. For example, well, you turn it on, and uh, with Zul'jin, I think you need to deal damage, and then like, you lose HP. But here, for example, yeah. you activate, and then you you start losing HP, for example. And like to like, to stop losing the HP or to get, to get it back, you need to start dealing damage. So like, you need to like realize when you're actually fighting. Oh. So like, you turn it on during yeah. the fight, yeah. and you deal damage, so like, it, your HP doesn't go away, but you deal more damage. But if you're out of the fight, you ju you just stop like start passively losing that HP, so you need to turn it off. So I maybe like that, this That's is a way. That's kind of out. nice. Cook of Empire so also can work. You could uh, you can actually turn the the life steal quite up, but as yeah. a downside, you would lose health very yeah. slowly. So you would have yeah. to face someone. You would have to attack someone, or turn it yeah. off. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's kind of nice. <laughs> so. Now it's time to get serious, guys. We're going to talk about the heroic <laughs> abilities, and we've got two of those for you in store. And you see that icon there. You see the icon of the first one, of the R1. And immediately, mm -hmm. if you've ever played World of Warcraft, if you've ever seen those things in Legion, in World of, War uh, World, uh, World of Warcraft, or in Warcraft 3, you played it, um, Infernals will ring a bell. And uh, they can pack quite a punch. And uh, they, I think it was probably one of the, if not the most powerful heroic ability in Warcraft 3. Uh, I think Grubby the other day actually had a discussion on his Warcraft 3 stream where he was uh, debating whether the Summon Infernal from the Dread Lord or the, uh, what was it called, Doom from the, the Pit Lord uh, was stronger. <laughs> because the Pit uh. Lord could basically hex an, an enemy unit, it would die, and after it died, it summoned a Demon Guard which was like a big yeah. demon as well. You could control that, and <laughs> it had all sorts of abilities. But I think we came to the conclusion that um, competitively, the Infernal was a little stronger because it, it had mm -hmm. this impact, and it was immune to magic. Uh, it had all sorts of uh, crazy attributes and uh, things to it. So, Nepcakes, what does yeah. Summon Infernal do if it were to be implemented in Heroes of the Storm? Okay, so my idea was that, you know... I, I basically going very similar to how it was in Warcraft 3. You know, it obviously summons in, the big meteor strike comes down, big delay to it. Uh, then it lands, it does a stun in an area, um, and then the fir Infernal appears. And I figured it would behave somewhat like a Gargantuan, perhaps, where you don't have direct mm -hmm. control over it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a demon. It's a bit crazy. It's just going to go go ham and start hitting people. So I figured it would just probably start attacking whatever is, is kind of nearest yeah, to it. At in in that time. impact circle, right? So Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of face around that. So like again, the, the initial thoughts I had were, okay, this could be a nice, you know, uh, ability which you could use defensively for your team. You know, like there's an Illidan diving on top of your team, gonna summon Infernal, you know, near my team. Well, now there's gonna be a stun coming down in a couple of seconds. This Infernal is gonna be fighting with us, you know, pulsing some AOE damage as well. So it's gonna help zone out. Or alternatively, you could do something crazy like with the sleep having that you know, uh, lunge ability. You could sleep someone in the back line, jump in, and then drop the Infernal on in the back line. Just be like, hey, boys, I'm here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have any ideas on how they could do it, but I mean, there's no question. Someone Infernal has to be has to be one of the heroics. It's yeah. so it's so iconic. And what, what, what came to my mind uh, was like being immune to abilities. So maybe mm. it wouldn't take any okay. damage or reduce damage. You know, if immune yeah. immunity is too too much, uh, it would take reduced damage from abilities. So it wouldn't be so susceptible to AOE abilities, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, it could also, like in, in Warcraft 3, there was a thing called Chaos Damage. And very few units and heroes had Chaos Damage because it was basically uh, ignoring all sorts of armor. It would always deal, like, full damage. 
sometimes it would yeah. even deal extra damage. I'm not sure. But it was kind of reminding me of like percentage damage or armor ignoring damage, right? So maybe those auto attacks, those mighty fists by the uh, by the infernal could <laughs> ignore like all sorts of armor, right? So yeah. they would always hit you with full force. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to level 20 upgrade, it can be an ability that Warlocks have, for example, in Legion, when you would uh, upgrade your weapon, like I guess it was like artifact weapon, right? Yeah. Uh, you could have uh, three Infernals. So it's like... <laughs> uh, but like in Heroes... That's amazing. Like, in, in Heroes, you can make it maybe like one main one, like in two, like, you know, like the, the, the little ones. But like maybe that, probably not three big ones, because as in World of Warcraft. <laughs> but still, like level twenty needs to be like something like whoa, and I mean bringing more in infernals. Like, I think that works. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> you kill it, and it splits into three little ones that are oh, almost God. as damaging. <laughs> and the smaller is smaller, and then you have an army of immortals. <laughs> infernals. I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's the story nightmares are made of. <laughs> yeah, level twenty upgrade. It like combos. It's like rain of fire, rain of destruction from Gul'dan. It just loads of them raining down everywhere. It's just insane. Oh god, that would be a bit too strong. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing though. Amazing. I mean, that's the cool thing about crafting heroes and theory crafting them. Yeah. Like you can go crazy. You can go nuts sometimes. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about R two. This is basically something yeah. that. Uh, does not exist in, in any game. It doesn't exist in World Warcraft. Yeah. It doesn't exist in Warcraft 3. This is something we came up with, and it was kind of like a unique thing about Heroes of a Storm. And I kind of like mm. it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think it could be done so cool in a visual way. You know, uh, the visual arts team, the graphics designers, oh, they could do so many cool things with this. Mm. Yeah, so it's called Swarm of Bats. And mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure like the death animation for the dreadlord when he died in and in, in warcraft 3 was True. he split into bats True. wasn't it yes yeah so i kind of went with that and, and my theory here was okay what could i give him that's a little bit a little bit different from like summon infernal which would obviously be a massive team fighting thing so i, I just came up with this as an idea which is uh sort of more of a personal survivability uh mm -hmm. a sort of thing where he, he, malganus would just turn into this cloud of bats um so it'd be untargetable it'd basically give you maybe like two or three seconds where you're you're effectively immune to damage kind of like the hacker when he burrows with that level 16 talent where you can move around something uh -huh. like that so it would let like you kind of move storm, around maybe? a bit yeah a bit like blaze storm as well and, and and my idea would be maybe it would apply a stacking slow or a bit of stacking a stacking dot to enemy heroes that are mm -hmm. within it so, so the it gives you you're in the swarm of bats yeah uh, the, the slower you're gonna get and uh, the more damage you take yeah, yeah. So again, it's kind of that idea. If you can use it as an escape, you can use it again a bit aggressively. Mm -hmm. you can perhaps use it as a bit of a zone tool, a bit of a peel tool to protect some of your teammates. Can yeah. you still take damage while in bat in the in the swarm form? Uh, I, I was gonna say probably like reduce maybe damage, sure. maybe. Yeah, yeah, or maybe like dots would affect you, but you wouldn't be you couldn't be targeted with anything new. I don't know. Yeah, let's say like you're in a swarm of bats and you stand in a flame strike. Yeah. I mean, the bats probably wouldn't like it much, would they? So it, it might hit. It might make it a little bit unbalanced, like in terms of you know heroes that do have those AOE abilities, mm -hmm. as opposed to like a hero like maybe a Zuljin or a Rainer that's more focused on their basic attacks. They'd be like, I can't do anything. Yeah, or, I can't do anything. How do you, exactly. you bounce that out? That could be a little tricky. Hmm. But he would not be able to stay hmm. in that form forever, right? No, like I, I figure it'd be like really short, like two or three seconds, but mm -hmm. maybe have a fairly short, oh, okay. like Inferno would have, obviously you would have to have like, like a major seconds cool for sure. Yeah, 100, 120, like a yeah. big deal. But the Swarm of Bats, maybe it could be like 30 seconds, you know, it's a much mm -hmm. smaller commitment. Like, yeah, kind of like Cloak of Shadows with Valera, sort of similar to that. Cool. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like, first, I, I just imagine like if you can stay in it for a very long time, imagine yourself the annoyingness of the Medivh, but that also deals damage to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not putting that. And then you say, like, you can stay in it for too long. I was like, okay, maybe that works. Mm. So otherwise, it's like, ah. Yeah. Another idea I had, like, an alternative heroic would be that unholy frenzy thing I was mentioning earlier. Like, it, a mega buff you put on an ally, kind of like a stim drone, but maybe it'd be like they take half of the damage that they deal. So that would open up maybe some interesting combos where I mean, it would be. <laughs> Horrible with Sulchin, he gets like Tastingo one HP. You're like, yeah, unholy friends, you go nuts. Or you know, combo with, with the divine shield. It opens up some kind of interesting synergies. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, it'd be kind of fun as well, get an appreciation like, oh, wow, you really are doing a lot of damage. Well done, damage dealer. We can see you're chunking <laughs> your own HP. You're doing so much. So I don't know. Yeah, I, there's it different would also give can... him this surprise, you know, this element of surprise in which you could use the swarm of bats. No, nobody can touch you. Nobody can yeah. uh, attack you. And you're just going to reappear uh, yeah. behind the enemies, right? It, it's going to be so mm -hmm. nice. Like, I really think this yeah. could be a nice alternative. And I, I also like it. I think that should be part of Heroes of the Storm much more in other heroes where you have one really long cooldown heroic ability and the, the other one is kind of like lower cooldown but more immediate. Mm. So I like the the stark contrast, right? It's it's it was kind of yeah. like on uh, on Gul'dan, for example, right? You have two long cooldown abilities and one is so bad because of that long <laughs> cooldown. Like yeah. imagine Reign of RNG uh, like having a lower cooldown <laughs> and maybe being a little mo bit more accurate. Uh, it would yeah. actually be pretty sweet. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like Karazim you were singing. They're, they're, they're so different in how they're mm -hmm. used. So there's real like trade-offs to each one. Like It's a very specific type of gameplay that you're going to go into, depending on, on which yeah. heroic you go with there. Yeah. All right, cool. So that was our first uh, Chop Shop hero creation. Heko, you want to add something? I want to add uh, another heroic, maybe. Yeah, Ooh. go for it. Like, go on. The third one, but like as like a change to one of the ones that we mentioned. Sure. So... As like we know, like Malgana is uh, uh, is a uh, dreadlord, and they're not really usually fighting themselves. They're kind of like putting a nation versus a nation. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're definitely how... the schemers and uh, very yeah, tricky, like, tricky fellows, you stuff know. Like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what about some kind of friendly fire heroic? Oh, <laughs> imagine, imagine like you put like, this ability on an enemy, uh, on an enemy, and his abilities will not only deal damage to enemies but also to his teammates oh, that's, <laughs> oh I, the possibilities that, that's kind of nice to be honest like uh, <laughs> it would be kind of hard to balance i guess but uh. the, the, the 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 chaos and the mayhem that could come like just imagine a junk red, right the lord of mayhem himself yep. like if his grenades could <laughs> also just harm allies or yeah but uh, i mean like not for a long period yeah but, yeah, like, yeah. Sure. just 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 to, like say two seconds or so yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like that is, I think uh, on a professional level, they'll be so interesting to watch, like how like they're communicating of like, okay, you don't deal damage. And then you have like damage dealer is like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Okay, <laughs> now I can do. And then he deals mm -hmm. damage. Yeah. Or, or yeah. you know, imagine uh, a Kelfes uses a power blast on an, enemy, uh, on an enemy and the enemy is like running into uh, his enemy and like both of them are getting damaged by the pyro blast. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> there's so many possibilities. You, you use that on Karazim, and the moment he pops the seven sided, it also affects allies. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but the oh. one I'm thinking of is a diva bomb. She's like, I got this, guys, <laughs> drop him a bomb. <laughs> See? Like, nope, <laughs> how many, Ooh. how many fun videos we can make with that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure somewhere in a corner, Doc Horu, when he hears this, uh, when he hears this, or uh, the hot WTF moments, they're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, awesome sauce. Basically. No, uh, once, once again, guys, very important. Uh, if you like this uh, sort of fictional imaginary hero concept, you can let us know in the comments on Twitter, uh, in Twitch chat, and uh, let us know what which hero you would like to see in an upcoming episode. Maybe there's a Ooh. lot of uncapped potential here, right? There's still so many cool individuals. Uh, from all the Blizzard universes that we could talk about in the future. Milhouse. So, Milhouse Madness Storm, there we go. 